by the way this is a vatacharya today um, i'm just going to take this session um no, right. what we are going to do we shall start with function in the first half of the session we shall discuss concepts on function and after that we will discuss a few questions on functions okay okay okay, okay so let's start so uh, for function if i ask you to give one example on function can you give me one example on function um if i if i am allowed to inform you that i have actually not started with any ig math yet so i am okay. unfamiliar with this okay no problem we'll discuss that you will definitely be familiar with this function it's nothing but any algebraic expression algebraic expression means like you know suppose if we consider a for x equals to let's say 2x minus 4 right all right fine hmm. so 2x minus 4 it's an expression in x so it's called function in x so okay, any right. expression any expression may not be a function so we'll get to know how to find out or how to identify a function now question is if i ask you can you find out the value of f of 4 f of 4 is equal to yeah, 8 minus 4 Four. Four is four. Yes, true. So in place of x, just we have to uh, substitute four. It is going to be like this. So it's four. Now question is, which type of function, which type of expression would be treated as function? That's what we have to know. Function. Okay. If we just com compare the function with uh, a with any of the real example like a water tank. you know function uh, it's basically compared with a water tank having two pipes one is inlet other one is outlet now question is what inlet is inlet means x x values so we can have yeah. we can have like we ha we can regulate the x values it means like we can choose any x values but we don't have any control over y values this is outlet or f of x for example you could choose x equals to 3 or x equals to 4 but you don't have any control over its output it depends on output means this value it depends on the nature of the function so this type of um this type of figure can uh, visual like uh, by this type of figure we can visualize but there is one more thing we have to know basically you know the collection of x values if we just um, accumulate the collection of x values here in this set are you familiar with set yes beta yes okay so uh, what, uh how will you define a set like what set is Okay, uh, so a set is a is a collection of uh, uh, it's a collection of values. So, um, um, with yeah, a set is a collection of values. That's the first thing that we learn. A set, a part of set. Perfect. Yes. So, uh, set is a collection of values. Um, it can be values or it can be some letters. It can be some symbols. But what we have to keep in mind, uh, in a set. repetition is not allowed suppose if you consider the values like 1 2 3 4 it goes like this but you can't have 2 1 or 2 4 repetition is not allowed so collection of distinct values that would be the proper okay yeah vedant yeah the next one let's consider another set of y values So this one collection of x values. Domain. This is Domain. collection of y values. This is called range. Domain range. Okay. okay so oh, if you yes. want to paint down. 
if you want to pin down you can because and from now onwards there will be a uh, a few important discussion on sets uh, on on function because it's important like you know i will give you one more real example x values nothing but a few person like you know there are three person let's say these are three friends a b c here we are we are considering three debts like you know uh, for, uh, first fifth first march first april so these are the sets y values are nothing but you know we can consider like their birthdays so okay. if we say that birthday of a is on first fifth that of b is on first march and that of c is on first april is it possible or not in reality i mean yeah it is it is possible so this one is called one to one function it means every x value every x value have different y values distinct y values so one to one okay okay we'll come to the next one with the same example but there would be a um, condition would be changed like you know x values means three person abc y values means their birthdays so let's see what will happen so it's first fave first march okay. first jan let's say now if we say that birthdays of a is on first march that of v on first march that of c on first march is it possible or not again it is possible yes it is possible so this this one is it's called many to one so many x values different x values have the same y values so it's also possible yeah and one more important thing like there are three person a b c and there are three dates like first jan first fave first march now if we say birthday of a is on first jan that of b is on first fave and first march and that of c is on first fave so is it possible yes we can it is possible okay why do you think it's possible no no wait b the birthday of b is on first march first fave and first march yes that's not possible oh okay. wait Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yes, because you know, like uh, in real life, one can't have more than one birthday. So same thing for function. One x value can't have two different y values. Y values. So yes. one to many, it's not possible. Okay, okay. So this is the way. This is the way to check which expression would be um, a function. which one isn't so for example this is okay. a few set of values 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 3 comma 0 second one would be 5 comma 1 6 comma 1 7 comma 1 third one would be One comma five, five comma zero, one comma zero, two comma three. So these are the three values of an expression. So which one would represent a function? It can have more than one answer. It's not like that. It exactly any one of them would be function. 
Which one of them would be a function, you say? Yes. These are the values on some expression. Like if we consider any expression, for example, uh, I will tell you, like if we consider a fun expression like this, once we give x values as 1, y values comes as 2. two. So we can write 1, comma 2. Because x value is 1, y value is 2. Okay. So let's find out which expression Okay, the third one is not possible, is not a function. Okay, third why? One. Because you can't have 5 and 0 as y values for 1 as x. No? Perfect. So same x values 1 goes to 5 then goes to 0. So it's like it's the same possible. person having two two birthdays. So it's not possible, yeah. it's not fu function. True. What about 1 and 2? Mm. 1 and 2 are possible functions, yes. Okay, can you display 1? It's like hidden up. Okay, just a sec. Which, uh, yes. like the first one. Now, now can you see yeah. properly one? I can see it, yeah. No. Yeah, one and two are both possible. Technically. Uh, okay, so for the first one, what we can see that one goes to two, two goes to one, and three goes to zero. So it means, uh, every x value has exactly one y value. So it's possible. And the second yeah. one, 5, 6, and Five, 7. 7 go to 1. Yes. The definite, uh, this is possible. Okay, fine. Let's come to, yeah. now question is, um, they might give you a few graphs. Graphs like, you know, um, they, you have to find out which graph would represent a function. Like they might provide you a circle, an ellipse, a parabola like this. Again, this one is a parabola. Maybe this type of graph. A vertical line, a horizontal line, a slant line. So let me number them. This is number one, this is number two, so that we can um, see which one would be a function, which one it's not. So there are okay. eight graphs we have. So how can we find out which graph would be a function, which one is not? Uh, how do you find out whether the which graph is a function and which one is not? Huh? Yes. Uh, how do you do it? Um, I don't know. Um. Okay. So again the same concept. One x value can't have more than one y value. So for the graph there is a vertical line test. We have to draw vertical line in such a way. The line we can, vertical line we can draw like this. But it's not the way. We have to draw vertical line in such a way so that it intersect the graph at many points. So we are drawing like this. At maximum number of points, that do, that would be the proper word. We have to draw a vertical line such a way so that it intersect the graph at maximum number of points. So here, what we can see that this vertical same vertical line intersect at two points, which is more than one. Yeah, so it's not a function. All right. The same way, same thing for the second one, ellipse uh, as well. True, definitely. What about the third one? Third one is possible. 
Okay, yes, we can draw a vertical line in, 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 in any manner. It won't intersect more than once. So definitely it's a function. What about fourth one? Fourth one is not possible. True. Fifth one Fifth is, is possible. Okay, yeah. Then the sixth one, well, sixth one is a vertical line, so uh, it's not possible. Yes, definitely, because if we draw another vertical line, it will coincide it will and all the points. Yes, the so. All the points, yeah. So it's not seventh, seventh one. You have to go down. It's possible, I think. Seventh one is a, is a straight line, right? Horizontal. Yeah, it's possible. And so is the eighth one. Yes, perfect. So any graph, when we are given, so we have to rely on vertical line test. So I'm just writing the statement. I believe it's clear now. So vertical line test. A vertical line. This means okay. is drawn in such a way it the graph at maximum. Number of points. Now, if point of intersection, number of points of intersection is greater than one, it's not a function. Yeah. If it is exactly one, if it is equal to one, then it's a function. Okay. Less than one, less than one, it's not possible at all. Okay, so that's why. Right. Okay, let's come to, let's come to one more thing. Like, we know that a function basically depends on two things. Like, a function has two parts. One is x values, that is called domain, set of all x values. Yeah, and has domain and range. True. That is y values and range. You know, so we'll be asked to find out. They, they will provide you a function. We'll be asked to find out uh, how you find the domain. For example, if we see that f of x equals to x minus 1. Wait, 1 by x minus 1. They will provide you to find out domain. So how will you find that? That is all possible x values. All possible x values, right? Like yes. How do you find all possible x values? Okay. That's an interesting question. How will you find? Yes. Definitely first, uh, how will you find that? Um, why do you think it is confusing? Like, you know, uh, what it seems like? It seems there would be infinitely many. That's the problem, right? Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, like if we think little bit differently, can we identify what are the x values or what would be the x value for which we can't have any y values? Will One. there be an x value? One. One. So it means we, if we are trying to find out x equals to 1, we will be getting one. Exactly. Will there be any other x value for which it is not possible? I don't think so. But I suppose it's fine. Okay. I mean, yeah. so, so the domain would be. There will be no other um, integer value for x. Uh, it's not like integer values, it can be a fraction, it can be decimal, 
Exactly. It can so, be. Okay. So yeah. domain would be x is an element here, the real number where such that x is not equals to one. So in interval notation, how are we supposed how are we supposed to write this? X is an element of Axis. negative infinity to one and one to infinity. Someone might uh, someone can write like this as well. X is an element of negative infinity to infinity minus one. Is that minus one? Singleton set one. So here is the domain. Here is zero. Here is negative infinity. Here is infinity. So let's consider one only. So here is negative infinity. Here is infinity. So what we can see that just above one dotted line indicates that it is not defined here. To the left of one and to the right of one, it's defined. So is it yeah. clear? How can you find so, the yes. domain? So, yeah. Okay. No way. Um, finding the yes. domain, right? So what we, what I just did was simple hit and hit and trial. So like one is the only one where it never matches, right? So is there another way to find the uh, x ranges? Yes, trials? definitely, definitely. Uh, for range, uh, right now we are not coming to range part. Let's let's become familiar with domain part then we'll come to range so what uh, yes heat and trial method that's i know i'm coming to that part how will you find the domain exactly for this type of function what we have to do whatever be the denominator we have right so here what we can see that it's x minus 1 it's a, it's in the denominator part so it must be equal to 0 okay and that value of x will give you where the function is not defined. So let's discard that to get the exact domain. Vedant, now it's clear? Yeah. Okay. So we'll give you this type of, uh, one more, one more question so that you can, you can apply this. Okay. Yeah. Suppose if we consider h of x equals to 1 over 2x plus 3. Let's find out domain. Domain b x values, right? So, yes. So, should I find out for which it is not possible or which is it possible? Just a sec. Just a sec. Let me change this one. Now, let's find out domain. I will I need I need my notebook for that. Domain, huh? How but how will you find the domain for this? It's like it's one by two x square minus four x plus three x minus six, right? 
again we need to stick to the basic like you know where we will find where which weights values will give us you know like um uh, undefined answer so let's find out let's by uh, comparing or let's equating the denominator to zero that's what we need to do now question is there are two factors it's already in factored form 2x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals to 0 so it means each one must be equal, equal to 0 that's what we have to know so if 2x plus 3 equals to 0 so what would be the value of x 2x plus 3 equals 0. Huh. Okay, so the value of x can be negative 1.5. True, it is. And what about this one? x minus 2 equals 0. It's 2, obviously. x is equal to 2, okay. positive 2. So it means there are two values of x for which it won't be um defined so we have to discard these two values so from the domain like you know we can write in interval notation negative infinity to negative 1.5 union union with negative 1.5 to one, two, union to two, 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 two infinity positive yeah so that that is the domain for x well for this one yes. one by two uh, x plus three into x minus two. Right. So here, uh, what we can see that we are just considering. You can see that two empty circles just have negative one point five and two. It mean it indicates that negative one point five and two are excluded, and to the right of two also it goes towards infinity and to the left of so negative 1.5 so all of this is real for this yes this all this yes yes so no. definitely also we can write like this infinity so minus 1.5 comma 2 yes <laughs> That's supposed to be negative 1.5. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's clear now? Yeah, I got that. So, so, you just, so to find the domain, you have to find the values which don't fit for this particular. And then exclude yes. them from the domain. Yes, it so depends it's on this. It's, it's, it's only for this type of function. When we have such denominator. Okay, so we'll get to know like there there would be different type of functions and approach would be different. There would be around four to five types of function and so we have to use different approach from them. So when we have that this type of denominator, the approach would be like this. Okay, now yeah. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. All right. So, okay, fine. We need to find out domain of this. Oh. It's square root of x minus nine. Hold up. Domain of square root of x minus nine. Yes. Oh, so look, x cannot be anything greater than nine. Okay. Yeah, x cannot be anything greater than nine. So we write this in interval again. So like. Uh, okay, so you meant to say x can't be anything greater than 9. Why is it yeah. so? Because the root of a negative number is imaginary. Okay, okay. So you write that square root of a negative number is an imaginary uh, number, so which we can't consider. We are concentrating on real. 
Now question is, um, uh, you know like square root of 4, what would be the value of square root of 4? 2. 2. And at the same time square root of 0? 0. Yeah. Okay, so it means any positive and any 0 value, square root of any 0 value will give us any real value. So x minus 9 has to be either greater or equal to 0. Isn't it? Exactly. So x would be, if we just add plus 9 to both sides, x would be greater or equal to 9. Yeah. So at max it can be 9, right? So that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, no. Minimum value is 9, right? x is greater or equal to 9. So it means, let me draw this on the number line so that you will get to know. What I meant to say, minimum value of the domain is 9. Because here is 9 to the no, right okay. of 9. Minimum, wait, how, how is minimum value 9? Like for example, if I put 10 in the, in the place of x here. So if I say f of 10 is equal to root of 10 minus 9, that, that becomes 1, right? Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, minimum value, right? I'm saying the left side, I got confused. Minimum yeah. value of x, not f of x. Ah, yeah. Because, because we are concentrating on domain only. Domain means x values. Yeah. Okay. So here we have to just, just, just plot the number, plot the circle, dark circle would be here because 9 is included and we have to move towards the right of 9. So how will we, uh, it's clear, Vedant? Yeah. So now question is how, how will we, you know, how will you do this one uh, in, uh, or how will you represent this one in interval notation? Okay. So, yeah, so x belongs to, so could you represent it for me? So, you, um. Okay, so I'm just. Oh, uh, hello. Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, like, what we can do, 9 and infinity, because to the right of 9 it's moving, 9 is included, because equality sign is also there. Can you see that? Greater or equal to 9. Yeah. So, we have to. 9 and infinity. We have to include 9 by using square bracket. An open bracket would be for infinity because we can't include infinity. That would be the domain. When any in point is included, we have to use square bracket. And when any in point is excluded, we have to use open bracket. Okay. Okay, so hope it's clear. Can we move on? Yeah. Okay. So that representing or in uh, representing in the interval form is a little like I, I like I can I can do it like slowly. It's kind of hard. That's it. Okay. Like I just have to okay. understand. Yes. Each and every one. That's it. Definitely, because you know, like these concepts during the regular sessions, um, we need to cover yeah. not in a single session. You will get a scope to practice at home. So that you can be familiar with each and every concept. Nothing to it. Right now, just we are okay. we are having a view. Uh, uh, you know, just just like the key concepts on the functions. So far, like what we have covered, I'm trying to, um, you know, uh, tell okay. you in brief. Like so far, yeah. we just covered how to find any expression or how to find out whether it's any expression, it's a function or not. After that, any graph, when any graph can be mentioned as a function, and after that, we came to know, or we just uh, started finding the domain of any function. That's what we have done. And if we are not comfortable, as of now, if we are not comfortable with interval notation, we can simply write x is a real number, such that x is greater or equal to 9. That's what we can write. Is it Oh, yes. Okay.
So let's move on. Now, just we can have one more function. You need to find out its domain. It's this. Let's find out domain. You do to 5 plus x. Yes. That's plus, right? Yes. Domain. One by root of five plus x. X cannot be minus 5 and below in this case. Okay, why? Because, again, if you're saying 5, uh, so if it's minus 5, so that becomes root of 0, so 1 by 0 is 0. And then if you go below that, so minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, becomes root of a negative number, which is imaginary in itself, so you can't have anything below minus 5 as X. So that makes yes. it X. Yes, what you said it's fine, like 5 plus 6 has to be greater or equal to 0. Now question is, yeah. now question is, okay, now question is, if if we consider it is equal to 0, so what will happen? 1 over square root of 0, this is 1 this over is 0, impossible. and undefined. So we have to discard the possibility of 0. So whenever we have any functions in that way, we have to be careful about the denominator. It can never be 0. Yeah. That's why it is greater than 0. So, x should be greater than negative 5. Greater than negative 5. We are subtracting negative 5 from each side. So, here, x should be greater than negative Okay, so that means, uh, in does it mean that x belongs to uh, minus four comma infinity? Then okay, so now question is on a number line. There is a important property which you have to remember. On the number line, you know, like the number which is on the right, it's called greater compared to the number which is on the left. So here right. is minus 5, right? Now question okay. is, we are saying that x should be greater than minus 5. So first of all, minus 5 is not included. So empty circle and it's greater. So it should move towards the right of negative 5. Yeah. So it means here is infinity and here is negative infinity. So definitely it would be moving towards infinity. And in interval notation, we should write this. All right. Yeah, exactly. So, wait, minus, it cannot be minus 5 either. So, so it cannot be x belongs to minus 5 comma infinity. It should be minus 4 comma infinity. Because x cannot be minus 5 as well. Okay. So that's why that's why I was uh, I was saying that when we write this this notation like a comma b this notation okay. is open bracket it means a and b are excluded it means we are not counting uh, or including a and b when do you use All right. this one that's right. Oh, okay, so parenthesis means A and B are excluded and square brackets means A and B are included, alright. Yes. Now question is, one thing you just mentioned, like here is, should we consider from minus 4? If we consider from minus 4, you know, like what would happen, you know, like we are 
neglecting many values in between negative 5 and negative 4. Like negative 4.5, negative 4.6, all these are discarded. Because they can have a well valid answer, but we are discarding. So it's not the way. So let's discard only the point of disturbance, which is negative 5. So that's why we wrote like this. Right. Okay. So can you move on? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Next we can. one, I what do we have to know? What do we have to know? Range and inverse of a function. <coughs> so for any okay. function, I'll just give one example. You know, for any function, like if we say 1 over x minus 5, now you can quite easily find out its domain. But its range and inverse, that's what we have to find out. So there are a few steps for this. Like it's basically 2-3 steps. Right. In the step 1, we have to replace f of x by x. And oh, meaning? x by y. Mean, it, it means like f of x, f of x in place of f of x, we have to write x. In place of x, y. That would be the first step. Okay, does it make sense? The first step is important. Vedant? Uh, okay, so could you, could you explain? Yeah. Um, so, wait, yes, how just, are you just we have to, just in place of a for x, it. we have to write x. In so place of x, it, right? we have to write y. That is the first step. Okay, so there's no. It's just uh, that right is it. the first step of finding inverse. Yes, yes. Okay. We have to write it. Why we are writing this? Right. It's not important as of now. Okay. Let's remember. Uh, let's remember like a rule. Okay. So we'll discuss in detail uh, why we are writing this, but not now. As of now, this is basically a mechanical process. Where we are writing like this. So now, what we have to do, we are, we have to, in the step 2, we have to find the value of y. That is, make y as the subject. So how will you do this? We will consider the reciprocal or we can cross multiply. So this would be like this. All right. yeah. Now we can divide both sides by x. Now we can just add 5 so that it would become this. So this very expression that is y in terms, the value of y in terms of x, this is f inverse x. The value of y in terms of x. Alright. Now to find the range x. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now to find, to find the, range. the range, we have to find the domain of f inverse x. So range of f means domain of f inverse. So can you find its domain? Yes. Domain of f inverse of x. Yes. Okay. Well, see, x can be anything except zero. Yes, definitely. So range has to be anything except zero. So its range so, would be exactly so. Any real num number y such that y is not equals to zero.
ओके इट्स क्लियर वेदांत या 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 ओके सो द सो द नेक्स्ट वन व्हाट वी कैन डू After that, yeah, okay. Uh, let's find out one over x minus seven. Let's find its inverse. No. Uh, okay. Can you can you find its inverse, Vedant? F inverse of x. Okay, fine. So let's go ahead. Uh, I cannot draw on the whiteboard, right? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, definitely, if you want, if you want, you can. You have the access. Oh, I'll, I'll just do it on the whiteboard as well. I'll probably do it for the different colors. Okay. Okay. So let's just change that to x. Change that to x. Okay. X and we change this to one by y. Minus seven, right? Perfect. Yes, it is. All right. So, so now we find y in terms of x. Is it? Right? Okay. Uh -huh. To find y in terms of x. Um, I'll just so why why is equal to Right, I think. Okay, so you are getting y in terms of y and x, but we have to get y in terms of only x, not in terms of like it's it's like a mixed expression. So it's not like that. For this, after this step which you wrote, x is the very first step is perfect. X is equals to one over y minus seven. So if we add seven to both sides. We have to isolate y. Isolation of y is important. So we are just keeping other terms to uh, to one side and y to this. So it becomes x plus seven equals one over y, right? Yeah. So it becomes y is equal to one by x plus seven. <laughs> so this is going to be inverse. So it means isolating, no? isolating of the variable y because we are keep we we need to keep y to one side and other all other expression to other side. Yeah. Okay, this is how we can find in inverse. Now, question is, what would be its range? This range, huh? um, range of this. Yes. F inverse of x is i is equal to. The 
again, this can be mm, anything below negative like below negative seven is not allowed here. First of all, the, first of all, there is uh, no square root. It's simply one over x plus seven. Oh yeah, so ne ne oh yeah, fine. There's no square root, right? I don't see that. So negative seven is not allowed. True. So how should we find? Uh, how should we write the range? So wait. Um, why is an element why, of real? Why is an element not equal to minus seven? Yeah. Or in interval notation, we can write this from negative infinity to infinity. We can remove negative seven. Okay. This is, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we are moving to a few questions. We'll see that a few questions here. So here is the first question. Where? You, uh, you, you're given f of x as 7 minus 2x and g of x as x plus 3. We need to find what would be the value of g compose f of x. Do you know this symbol? What does this symbol represent? Uh, no. What, what, what is the symbol? It's composition. Composition means it's not product. So what we have to do, the function which is on the right, we have to write like this g of f of x g of f of x all right so if f of x is 7 minus 2x and g of x is so we can substitute that value g of 7 minus 2x like see okay. yes because f of x is 7 minus 2x which you have mentioned First, what we are doing, the function which is on the right, that is f, it's inner function. Yeah. So we are substituting the value of inner function at first, 7 minus 2x. So it becomes g of 7 minus 2x. Yeah. So now if g, it is g, g of a, g of 7 minus, 7 minus is, 2x becomes, okay. so the x in g of x becomes 7 minus 2x. Okay. Yes. So in place of x, this one, we should write 7 minus 2x. So that becomes 7 minus 2x plus 3. That becomes 10 7 plus 3, 10. Yeah, 10, 10 minus, minus 2x. 2X. <laughs> okay, so the first one we have discussed. Let's come to the second one. We need to find inverse, g inverse of x. G inverse of x. So g of Okay, look. So g of x is equal to x plus 3, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then, so let's say, so x is equal to y plus 3, right? And y is equal to x minus 3. Isn't that, that, that yes. is g inverse of x, right? Yeah y is equal to x minus 3. So g inverse of x is simply x minus 3. Yeah. Okay. There is no y. Because g inverse, you know, like y you got x minus 3. So g inverse of x should be x minus 3. Because y and g inverse of x, these two are equal. So that's why. Yeah. Okay, first two part we have discussed. Let's come to the third part. It says f compose g inverse of 5. What f? Composition. Compose means, uh, like you know, this operation it's called, as we said, composition. composition uh, yeah. There are two functions here. One second. So f we need to find out the value. Composition of g inverse of 5. Eh? Okay. So first let's yes. use this word. 
um, G inverse of 5. So you, or we already found G inverse of X is X minus 3. So G inverse of 5 will be 5 minus 3, which makes it 2. So that, right, so okay. F, composition, F composition of 2 becomes 7 minus 2 into 2, which is 7 minus 4, which is, 7, which is 3. Now, here, here I would like to tell you, there is no composition sign over here. So we should not say like if composition of 2, it's simply F of 2. Yeah, composition it is, it is, is here. It is F composition of uh, G inverse of 5, right? And the value of G inverse of 5 is 2. So, that's all. F now, F of 2. Now, Okay, so now once you decode composition sign and you write like this, we need not to mention composition because it's not the composition. It's f of g inverse of 5. Of. We have to mention of. So here it would become f of 2. So this place is uh, composition. It's like, you know, it's uh, it's an operation. When you decode this, it's not like composition. Yeah. We should read like f of this. So, what would be the value of f of 2? Oh, wait, which question are we doing again? I, I missed what you were saying, you were inaudible for a minute. Okay, so what are you saying that once we get f of 2, so composition we must mention over here because this sign is this symbol is composition. After that, oh, yeah, once okay, we decode yeah, the yeah, symbol yeah, composition, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that. Uh, so this so is now not f of two. F of two becomes yes. seven minus two x into two, which is seven minus four, which is three. Yes. Now it's fine. See. Now let's come to the next question. In this question two, we have we are asked to uh, consider the function f of x equals two k x square minus four k x plus one, where k is not equal to zero. The equation f of x equals zero has two equal roots. What would be the value of k? Okay, so for this type of question, Vedant, what we can do? If we just compare with the standard form, yeah. it's a x square plus b x plus c. Yeah. So the value of a here, what we can see that 2k. The value of b, it's negative 4k. And the value of c is 1. Yeah. yeah. Now question is, you can see that they have said equal roots. The condition for equal roots is that b square minus 4ac. But b square minus 4ac. That would be equal zero, to zero. Yeah, I know. By discriminant, yeah. Discriminant b square minus 4ac. Yeah. Discriminant. Perfect. Exactly. So minus 4k whole square, square minus 4 into 2k into 1 has to be equal to 0. So 16k square minus 8k. Has to be equal to zero. Yeah. Okay. So from there, can you find out the value of k? Yeah, one second. K is equal to 8. No way. K is equal to 0. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, so let's let's uh, expand this one. Like first 16k square, which you said minus 8k is 0. Yeah. So if we just factor out 8k, factor 8K you so we are left with 2k minus 2k one. minus 1. Right. Right. 2k minus 1. Oh wait. wait. Yeah. 2k minus 1. So when if we So, 2k minus 1 is equal to negative 8k minus 
So 2k minus 1 equals to 0. What would be the value of k? 2k minus 1 is equal to 0. So k can be either 0 or k can be either half, like 0 0.5, 1, point, 1 by 2. So, uh, in the question they have mentioned k is not so equal to zero, yeah. 0. So, k is equal to 1 by 2. So, Vedant, that's it for today. Right. And uh, as moderator informed, we have sent you the complete course details on your email ID. Tomorrow we shall call you after sending feedback. Okay. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the session. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.